Hey, what's up, Warriors? My name is Coach JB, here to inform you and share information with you so you can make an informed decision. Like I said, my name is Coach JB, the top health and mindset coach in the world. What you believe in your heart, you think in your mind, will eventually become your words and become your reality. And the key to life is, if you know the game, you can never be played. So we're putting out a video, sometimes two videos a day, uh, at least one video a day. So make sure you click like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification button to make sure you get informed. Now I'm going to show you this video first, and then I'm going to show you how the government and central banks are moving to a digital dollar. Now what does that mean? Today, as I make this announcement, you will see PayPal, Bitcoin hitting your accounts. You literally will be able to buy Bitcoin. I think it's Litecoin and Ethereum. Don't quote me on that. I think it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum on your PayPal account. It's about to go down, Warriors. The freight train is here. The new quantum financial system is here. The new fourth industrial revolution is here. But I want to show you this fun video. Now, I'm going to start by saying this. I could not find this video myself, so it's just fun to think about. It's from 19... That's probably why I couldn't find it. I was, I was looking at 1950. <laughs> February 29th, 1956. Um, this is... Uh, from somebody else's YouTube channel, and I'll link them down below. Um, I was looking in the wrong archive, but it's from an archive system on the web on the web browser from a 1950s video. So I don't have any proof that this is real or someone didn't recreate this, uh, but it's pretty interesting to watch. So I just wanted to put that out there, um, but I believe it. So just follow along. When you think of the future, you likely envision the remarkable technologies that you've seen in comic books and films. You may begin to picture flying cars, trains driven by electromagnets, or household robots that will see to your every need. While modern scientists agree that many of these inventions are either unlikely or unnecessary, it may surprise you to learn what the future could actually hold. Imagine being able to share your thoughts with millions of people at once, simply by typing them on a keyboard and sending them through the air. Think of what life will be like when all of the many fixtures of an office, including a typewriter and an entire Rolodex, can fit within a device smaller than a loaf of bread. Consider the vacation plans you could make when a single trip on an airplane is all that's needed to visit anywhere on Earth. Yes, the future certainly looks bright, but it isn't without its darker sides. According to some predictions, obesity will likely run rampant, and political corruption will become so commonplace as to be accepted. People with nothing entertaining or informative to say will broadcast their demands for attention, and once-beloved performers will become pushers of snake oil. Perhaps worst of all will be the emergence of a deadly and potentially devastating disease. Think of the last time that you contracted influenza. You were likely bedridden for days, having no appetite or desire to play games. Experts predict that by the year 2020, a new virus will rise, spreading from somewhere in Asia to the rest of the world. And with international travel being available to even the most common citizen, a sickness which would have been contained in years past will quickly spread to all corners of the globe. Worse still, the fantastic technologies of the era the instantaneous communication and the ability to spread misinformation will cause undue panic and unrest. While you may think that we have decades to prepare, the frightening truth is that we have already become susceptible to the spread of this upcoming pandemic. The people preparing our food will do so without washing their hands, and the declining standards for common hygiene will cause the release of marauding clouds of infection. Even today, children would prefer to attempt the carefree murder of their playmates rather than lecture one another about covering their mouths when they cough. So how do we reverse this trend? How do we avoid the coming catastrophe? Many doctors would suggest that we simply need to learn and practice better health habits, but that may not be enough. As it turns out, there is a solution. But first, a word from our sponsor. A no I'll go ahead and stop the video right there. I'm not going to make any comments on this video that I don't have any proof that it's actually a real 100% video, but you can actually look at archive.org and I actually probably will find it because I was putting in the wrong date. I was typing in 1950s. There is a company called archive.org. You can find videos and 
you better believe that I'm deep in those videos looking for connections from way back. There's an archive of YouTube video, or, no, or excuse me, um, of videos on the internet. So I just want to share that with you guys, a fun little video. I will attach uh, this gentleman's YouTube channel. Um, make sure you give him a like, follow, subscribe. So let's first start off with what a central bank is. I want to make sure you understand what a central bank is. Then you have a commercial bank. So when you hear bank, there's a commercial bank where you go to do your product, your, get your products and services, you do your transactions like a Wells Fargo, a Chase, a Bank of America. Then you have what's called a central bank. It's different from your commercial bank. Okay, A central bank, reserve bank, or monetary authority is an institution that manages the currency and monetary policy of a state or formal monetary union and oversees the commercial banking system. In contrast to a commercial bank, a central bank possesses a monopoly on increasing the monetary base in financial crisis. Let me repeat that. Possesses a monopoly on increasing the monetary base in a financial crisis. Words matter. Most central banks also have supervisory and regulatory powers to ensure the stability of member institutions, to prevent bank runs, and to discourage the reckless fraudulent behaviors by member banks. They're worried that there's going to be a bank run right now, guys, just so you know. So let's run into this. What are we going to do? What's going on within our infrastructure? Now you know what a central bank is. They literally monitor, support, and make sure or they actually have a monopoly on increasing the monetary bank systems, right? In a financial crisis. All right, so let's run right in here. This was six months ago. Okay, let's start with this one. China is the first of the G20 countries to launch oh. its central bank. China is the first of the G20 countries to launch its central bank digital currency. But it certainly won't be its last. It's among the first in the world, but other countries like Thailand, and even recently, in the past few weeks, South Korea have announced uh, that they're going to move forward with their own uh, central bank digital currencies. So in contrast with existing systems, I think it's worth understanding for a moment that what we're doing now today is using perhaps an electronic form of the regular currency, and we're using financial institutions to trade that, that currency. And the financial institutions play a role, for example, in the real-time gross, uh, gross settlement system or in SWIFT, where they broker the exchange of these, of these currencies um, also through electronic means. Okay, let's pause for just a moment. He just said it. SWIFT brokers these fiat dollar transactions running across the world. XRP on the new quantum financial system they solve the same problem as SWIFT, cross-border payments. SWIFT is clunky, it's slow, it's a 50-year-old archaic system. It can't run on the same rails as a digital currency. XRP solves that rail problem, moving the money around the world, in seconds for pennies on the dollar. Oh, internet stopped. Hang in there, guys. But what the CBDC is aiming to do is to be an actual form of individual payment with direct clearance with the stated goal of replacing M0. And for those of you who, who don't know, M0 is cash. That's what it means. It's the actual cash in your pocket and in the bank sitting in a safe. And the idea here is that CBDC is replacing so it's not just a mechanism that connects banks in a new way. We've already got those mechanisms. Rather, it's a, it's a, in a new innovation that makes currency itself fully transferable. And that's an important differentiation, that it's aiming to actually replace M0. Okay, so let's stop right there. Okay, so that's China. You heard China. That was six months ago. Okay, now this is October 19th, 2020. This is our Fed Chair, Jerome Powell, speaking on digital currencies. I feel that we have an obligation to stay on the forefront of policy and technological innovation and developments as regards payments, cross-border payments, CBDC, all of those things, rather than that I felt that CBDC is central bank digital currency. Anything needed to happen quickly or imminently. In fact, I, I actually do think this is one of those issues where it's more important for the United States to get it right than it is to be first. 
Okay, so I'm going to pause just a moment. It's important for us to get it right, then be first. China's already rocking and rolling. There's countries going on. I'm going to show you right now. The EU is already getting ready to rock and roll. Do you think America is just going to sit back? No, no, no. Let me show you how they're just not sitting back. Maybe they're selling you a narrative. Maybe they're selling you a political theater. Okay. This is 116th Con Congress, second session. Okay. The Senate of the United States. I've read this to you guys a bunch of times. The required member banks to maintain pass-through digital dollar wallets and certain persons and for their purpose. Um, this was, uh, let me read you the actual uh, part of the digital. Digital dollar wallets, the term digital dollar wallet means digital wallet and account maintained by the federal bank on behalf of a person for the purpose of holding digital balances. Member bank, the term member bank means any national bank, state bank, or bank trust company which has become a member of one of the reserve banks, credit, or federal reserve. Pass-through digital dollar wallets. The term pass-through digital dollar wallet means a digital wallet or account maintained by a member bank on behalf of a person entitling that the person to the prorated share of the pooled reserve balance, okay, postal retail facility. Hmm. The term postal retail, why is post offices in there? Means post office, post office branch, post office classified station, or other facility that is operated by the postal service. The primary function of which to provide retail postal services and does not include the contractor operator facility offered postal service. Postal service means United States Postal Service. Why, why would they be talking about the postal service? Everybody's going to operate on a digital dollar. Where are post offices at? If you don't have a bank in a remote place in Alaska, do you have a post office? You almost have a post office in every single place. Post offices are going to have dual function. As we move into the new quantum financial system, the fourth industrial revolution, you're not going to be getting letters anymore. Everything's going to be done online. Your post office is going to be a place to do your digital banking transaction with the Federal Reserve. Okay, so this is already an act, guys. This has been out for a while. Okay, I don't have the date on here, but I've read this one to you guys in uh, old videos. Um, but anyway, so the digital dollar is already out. So don't let them sell you that they're just designing it or they're working on it. This is the actual bill explaining the digital dollar guys so we're dragging our feet right china's already rocking and rolling all right so let's head on over to the european union ecbc intensifies work on digital euro okay the european central bank today published its comprehensive report on the possible issuance they're issuing it prepared by the uh, euro system high level track ta uh, task force on central bank digital currency and approving the government council on the euro system high level task force Executive Order 13772 by President, President Trump in 2017 assigned the Digital Task Force for America. A digital euro would be an electronic form of central bank money accessible to all citizens and firms, like banknotes, but in digital form to make their daily payments in a fast, easy, secure way. It would co uh, complement cash, not replace it. Okay? The euro system will continue to issue cash in many in any in any case, excuse me. The euro belongs to Europeans, and the mission is to be the, its guardian, says Christine Lagarde, ECB president. Euro, Europeans are increasingly turning to digital ways they spend, save to invest. Our role is to secure trust in money. That means making sure the euro is fit for the digital age. We should prepare to issue digital euro should the need arise. Hmm. The needs here, guys. The pandemic. You're locked down. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. So. Here we go. Let's look at a PowerPoint. And 825 people have viewed this since October 27, 2020. That's it. This is how digital euro would impact the digital transformation of payments. And so we, uh, the euro system needs to be prepared to be ready to deploy those, those benefits, in particular under certain scenarios. And the euro system, VCB, is not um, unique, of course, in this. So it's a global, let's say, phenomenon of central banks to uh, study CBDC. So a BIS report found that 80% of central banks globally are engaging in CBDC work. And here, just to mention... Okay, let's make this very clear. 80% of central banks are engaging in cryptocurrency or digital currency. Where does a uh, digital currency operate on? A blockchain. What does cryptocurrency operate on? a block chain. Bitcoin just hit PayPal today. The FOMO is coming. Fear of 
missing out. The marketplace is going to get flooded when you get a digital wallet. When all of a sudden you see your banks custodying your cryptocurrency, you're going to have a crypto wallet. Then you're going to have your regular wallet, guys. This stuff is coming fast. Most people are going to get left behind. You know, big, uh, the big players, the People's Bank of China has been one of the early movers here and uh, started to study CBDC in 2014. It started uh, live experimentation and uh, local and focused uh, deployment of CBDC in uh, 2020. And here what uh, Javier Santa Maria has been saying, Rome has not been built in one day, seems to apply also for CBDC, looking at uh, the time the People's Bank of China has also taken uh, to work on this. And um, yeah, the Federal Reserve System has also, let's say, joined uh, joined the club recently. We have joined the club. And um, another, let's say, interesting maybe. The Federal Reserve System has joined the club, guys. The Federal Reserve 1913, Jekyll Island. They have now joined the club. Think about this. Bitcoin's a fraud. Cryptocurrency is a fraud. Why do you think you heard that so much? As the whole black swan events happening this way, you're all looking this way. They're getting ready to move into the new quantum financial system, hit the button, and they're going to become rich beyond their wildest dreams. There's the biggest shift in generational wealth happening right now. They're not going to miss the boat, guys. They're not going to miss the boat, and nor are you. Publication is uh, one by the BIS of a, Let's move forward just a bit. CBDC next to you know, the one alternative and one thing that is not an alternative. So um, CBDC is a liability of the central bank. It is, um, you know, that is a differentiation to a private means of payments, which are a liability of a private entity. And of course, you had already now um, central bank money, as you know, cash in the form of banknotes was uh, accessible to the general public. And there was also a digital form of central bank um, money, which were deposits um, with the central bank, uh, with uh, the euro system. But that uh, access to this type of deposits was limited essentially uh, to, um, to banks. No? So in a certain way, CBDC combines uh, the two in the sense we have uh, general public access, but we have a digital, the digital form. Um, so private entity liabilities, commercial bank money is well known, is available in digital uh, form, is deployed in, in, in many variants. Of course, you have e-money, you have, uh, you know, payments with uh, cards, you have uh, then maybe as an intermediate uh, thing moving further away from commercial bank money is uh, stablecoin projects that um, entail a liability of an identifiable entity. And that is no longer the case if you move then to the right. So Bitcoin, pure crypto assets, is not a liability of anyone. It is just an asset. It is not linked in terms of value to uh, any monetary unit. It therefore fluctuates and is uh, not, let's say, has only to a very limited extent the properties of money. And okay, so that's why Bitcoin is so valuable. Listen to the words. Central bank wants their money. They want you locked in. They want to see everything you're doing. Digital currency. Liability of private bank entities. Bitcoin is a non-liability to the central bank nor the Federal Reserve. It's a crypto asset. It, it's a store of value. It's not something where you're going to be buying, paying your bills. You might be able to, right? But right now, it's just a store of value. That's why it's so expensive because people want a piece of something. They want to move away from the deflating fiat dollar into a store of value, gold, silver, cryptocurrency. So I just want to pause there, guys. It's, it's important that you understand this information. Is this that exciting? No. Think about this. If you were in line at a store and you saw a Bible, and a tabloid magazine. Which one would you read? The tabloid magazine. This is like reading the Bible. I go deep inside of this stuff connecting the dots. So if you made it this far, you're a true warrior. And I want to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready for the biggest shift in generational wealth? Are you ready? Are you ready for the biggest change in history? Are you mentally ready, spiritually ready, and financially ready to protect your family, to protect what you've worked hard to earn? 
It's just something you want to think about. I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. I'm just documenting my journey as I move into the new quantum financial system, also the fourth industrial revolution and how I protect my mind, my body, my immunity, and most of all, the wealth for my family so I can protect the warriors in our academy. So if you're interested in joining our private Facebook group, just click the link down below. You can join the private Facebook group and get to know and like and trust us. If you're ready to jump right into the Warrior Academy, you can click the link below that. You can join the Warrior Academy today and you can start on Monday. You can start your journey. Mind, body, immunity, and I have you look over my shoulder as I invest in the new quantum financial system to bring money back to our warriors. Warriors, rise. Let's go.